welcome to the first episode of Devil in the Details. In this series, I'll be reacting to famous paintings by famous artists. So the first painting I have selected is the Garden of Earthly Delights by Hieronymus Bosch. So this painting was created between 1490 and 1510 when Hieronymus Bosch was about 40 years and if you look at this painting you would find so many minute details actually in this series i'll be reacting to these minute details in famous paintings that we are going to see as the series progresses so while scrolling through this famous painting by Hieronymus Bosch you feel like you have taken an LSD trip. Yeah, I too feel the same. I am awed by this various images, this human forms, this the colors, the nature surrounding it. But let's look at what Hieronymus Bosch actually meant by these paintings. Why did he make such a huge painting? What is the ideology that went behind it? So there are many interpretations about this painting. Some people say it's a celebration of human sexuality, especially modern interpreters. But if we look deeply, this painting is a warning about sin. This painting is a triptych. It has three panels and each panel have a particular meaning hidden within it and if we go deeper into this painting you would find certain astrological and psychological symbols a lot of allegory certain pictures of the unconscious mind or the subconscious mind but Hieronymus Bosch actually did not mean all these things for him this painting was a warning against sin so the first panel talks about the birth of man, the creation of Adam, the Genesis in the Bible. And the second panel actually talks about the sins of the world. And the third panel talks of hell, the wages of sin. The wages of sin is death. So let's react to this painting. Let's see what this painting can teach us. What we can see in this painting is so many figures, so many strawberries. Some people call it a strawberry painting because strawberries have special properties. Now let's look at the strawberries in this painting. There's this famous image of people carrying a huge straw strawberry but technically strawberry is a small fruit a very tasty fruit at the same time it's a fruit that gives pleasure for a very little time once you have eaten the strawberry the pleasure is gone so strawberry can mean temporary pleasures it also can mean lust a symbol of worldly pleasures and human beings are supposed to go after these strawberries the strawberry theme is repeated so many times in this painting you also find a lot of cherries apples and all these things reflect certain kind of desires which we go after so to learn about this painting or to understand this painting, let's start from the beginning. Let's go to the first panel. Wow. We cannot take our eyes from that panel. The second panel, the Garden of Earthly Delights. Now we will take a look at the first panel in this painting 
the creation is happening and God has created Adam God has taken a drip from him and he's tired after the operation and God has created Eve from one of his ribs Adam is looking at Eve with desire so this is the this can, this can be seen as one of the earliest examples of male gaze Adam is looking at a woman and Eve is the beloved Adam is the lover and Eve is the beloved Eve is looking down it represents shyness but it also represents chastity shyness was seen as an external representation of chastity and God is holding Eve Eve is set towards the left hand of God and Adam is towards the right hand of God God is represented as Jesus Christ and here the hand is special Jesus is given giving a blessing or God is giving a blessing so the three fingers that are opened up represent the Trinity and the two fingers that have closed up represent the dual nature of God dual nature of Jesus Christ to be specific Jesus Christ is both man and God yeah God has created man Adam in his own image and out of Adam Eve is born if you look at the hair of Eve, hairstyle of Eve, it represents the fashion of the times were when Hieronymus Bosch lived. And Eve is, Eve is surrounded by rabbits. Rabbits have a special symbolism. People have seen rabbits uh, along with the paintings of Venus. Rabbits represents promiscuity or sexual excesses and here women is the woman is blamed for man's desires you can see see a patriarchal uh, idea of what uh, sexuality is from these ancient paintings so this these paintings are not feminist it actually shows certain patri patriarchal feelings or uh, feelings against women that existed in ancient times especially especially the woman as a tempter and if you look at Adam's legs his legs are folded in such a way as if, as if he is on the cross you would have seen so many scenes of crucifixion how Jesus Christ keeps his leg yeah Adam also keeps his leg like that and with his leg he touches the cloth of Jesus so that's in a way the connection he maintains with God with Jesus and Jesus is uh, dresses pale red we will look at the significance of this color later and near Adam we can find a lot of animals especially this predatory cat or a civet it shows that violence is close by even though human beings are special human beings have a tendency towards violence and you have this creatures this black dark colored creatures that is a product of the imagination of Hieronymus Bosch three is an important number here you see this bird that has three heads a fish with the head of a unicorn a toad toads usually represent evil you have three toads 
they may not be representing the trinity but the evil trinity and you have another predatory bird eating a frog you have a fly, flying fish that's about to fly and surprisingly you have this platypus that's reading a book god has just created the world how come this platypus is reading the, a book it has it has already always uh, surprised me why did uh, hieronymus bosch put a platypus here with a book and how can a platypus read a book so it's a mystery so i don't have answers for that let's forget about the platypus for some time and look at jesus christ who is jesus christ looking at is he looking at adam is he looking at eve no he is breaking the fourth wall he is looking at you so jesus is giving us a warning a warning about chastity a warning about marriage so according to christianity the relationship between man and women can only happen through marriage and jesus has to bless the marriage marriage is a very important uh, sacrament Jesus Christ is the only clothed figure in this panel. The rest of them, Adam and Eve, and the animals around, are naked. So Jesus Christ is an anachronism. In the Bible, Jesus Christ does not come in the beginning. He comes only in the New Testament. So we can observe certain symbols that have always been. Uh, connected with Jesus Christ so check out the dragon tree over here this tree is one of the famous trees in Hieronymus Bosch's paintings uh, this tree was represented by other painters also during uh, those times if you notice the leaves of uh, this dragon tree are round symbolizing the host during the sacrament of holy communion and the grapes in this dragon tree represent the wine the blood of jesus as well as the body of jesus so in christianity these two symbols are actually very very important there's a there are four fallen apples there's a bird that's not straight so uh, these images Earlier I had mentioned that uh, these images could be the imaginations of Hieronymus Bosch but um, these images were very popular especially in Dollaries during those times and uh, Dollaries were books and these books uh, this these books were about religious themes and in the margins of these books you had so many small paintings drawings and Hieronymus Bosch was inspired by those drawings now we will look at something that's just about Jesus Christ I'm not talking about the environment something that's just about Jesus Christ it's the fountain of life and uh, if you notice uh, it has the same color as Jesus Christ's uh, dress. So the fountain of life is very important. It represents uh, creation. And uh, it, uh, we can see this in so many other uh, creations too. And it was often represented in uh, various paintings. And uh, if you look deep into the fountain of life, you will find the character of the owl. Owls are very important in Hieronymus Bosch's paintings. Owls uh, 
today represent wisdom but during those times owls were the symbol of evil owl is a nocturnal animal so owl owl actually represents the devil himself and there are so many fallen things over here they look as pearls uh, they look like look as christmas decorations they look as glasses uh, these glasses were used by alchemists during those times but again here this is an anachronism and apart from the owl you find so many other birds uh, you have ducks uh, and you should remember all these things are symbolic it can mean god's plenty uh, it can have other symbolic meanings too for example the peacock the peacock uh, represents immortality so there was a belief during the during medieval times that the flesh of peacock uh, does not rot even after its death so it's a medieval belief so you have the owl that represents satan who is going to tempt uh, eve and then you have a peacock that represents uh, immortality so both go hand in hand and again here you have weird creatures three heads i told you earlier three is a very important number over here and you have a swan swan also is symbolic in some ways and here you have a cave uh cave a cave here is also in a way uh, anachronic uh, it reminds us of the cave in which uh, jesus was buried after his death and here we have the famous palm tree with grapes palm tree is a very important symbol in christianity palm sunday is celebrated as one of the important festivals of uh, christianity and you have the snake the tempter just below the palm tree and the snake is eating dust this is actually a punishment given by god to the serpent you shall eat dust and this actually happens after uh, adam and eve are sent out of uh, the paradise so again here it's an anachronism so again these you can find all these animals and uh, bosch would not have seen these animals in his lifetime he would have seen uh, them from certain uh, books if you notice the sand the trees and the ant eat uh, below the palm tree forms a human face most fam famously syriac of uh, anonias manuscripts where he had so many animals drawn and uh, for bosch even this uh, giraffe could be a mythical creature along with her, all other animals just like this two legged uh, dog uh, even though uh, giraffes are real for europeans during those times they there there's no chance that they could have seen a giraffe in uh, real life and you have an elephant it looks like an african elephant and a monkey sitting on the elephant it's definitely not an asian elephant and you have livestock cattle that's very important during human evolution the evolution of human life and you have cranes small birds and along with them you have the unicorn too so again this unicorn is taken from syriac of uh, anonias manuscript and unicorn uh, is also a important uh, animal in folklore it is believed that the horn of the unicorn could neutralize poison and uni unicorn is uh, again compared to immortality if you would have watched uh, ha the harry the, the movie harry potter and the philosopher's stone you would have seen voldemort eating a unicorn in order to gain immortality yeah you have all these 
animals, gods plenty. It looks quite beautiful. Yeah, and you can see the these birds flying in a particular pattern. Uh, it's actually very realistic. It's a symbol of realism. You also have these small birds uh, that we usually grow at home. And there is a belief that uh, these patterns of birds flying were inspired by uh, other Renaissance artists. And what's a, one of the common symbols you can find here is the crescent moon. So there are so many people who think that the crescent moon, if you look at look at this fountain, uh, you will find this crescent moon in this uh, painting. Yeah, there are many crescent moons. And there are critics who say that these crescent moons actually symbolize Islam or the Ottoman Empire and actually uh, Bosch is criticizing Islam and the Ottoman Empire through it. But actually, these crescent moons could symbolize Goddess Diana. Goddess Diana is the goddess of childbirth and virginity. And again, you can uh, you can know the context in which this uh, symbol rests. The Sacrament of Holy Matrimony. This whole panel could be interpreted as the message of the sanctity of marriage. The rabbits here could represent the words from the Bible, be fruitful and multiply. And this fountain over here could represent the sacrament of baptism. And the tree, the palm tree, could represent the tree of life and the swan, purity and chastity, the peacock, resurrection, owl, temptation, and so on. Now let's go on to the second panel. Before going on to the second panel, I would like to recite a famous lines from Matthew 24, 36 to 39. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage. So this is this a representation of how the world was before the flood? Or is this how the world would have been if Adam and Eve had not had the forbidden fruit? There are so many interpretations to this panel. Is it a celebration of sexuality? There's also an interpret interpretation that talks of Adamites. So Adamites were a group of people who lived in the 13th century and they even uh, were present in the Netherlands. They believed in walking naked. Men and women who were Adamites walked naked. They believed that we could regain the innocence of Adam and Eve before they ate the forbidden, forbidden fruit by walking naked and thereby live in a paradise created on earth. So here we have people living according to their own free will, enjoying the beauty of pleasures. But that reminds us of another thing. So this painting is called the Garden of Earthly Delights, not a Garden of Heavenly Delights. And in medieval times, earthly devil delights were considered to be something worldly. And it was considered to be a vanity. So it reminds us of another biblical verse. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. So let's start from the left side. So this is a direct reference to the previous panel. So these two characters 
they are looking at the previous panel who are they looking at this bird we can't say they are referring to how god created marriage and how they should live according to the marriage how they should live according to god's plan and here you have a woman who is black and a man who is white so here it represents the diversity of human races but at the same time you must know that uh, bosch was actually racist and we'll see it in the other uh, images in this painting here you have again an owl a man hugging an owl and he may be in a inter species relationship and you have this couple in this shell in this pod and they are deeply in love with each other and you have a strawberry inside the pod and it looks like they are deeply in love with each other but again the pod is cracking it means that love doesn't last long and there will be a time when their love fails and you have a man upside down with a cherry between his legs and birds coming out of it yes it's his it's it represents creation again it also represents his fall and here you have a giant duck along with a giant bird and an interracial couple and this was during the middle ages and it was believed that having interracial relationships were sinful so in in this way we can say that bosch was racist and you have another couple who are about to have a relationship and the birds who are feeding them grapes so they are all trapped in some way or the other and here you have a man and a woman and the man is feeding a blackberry a blackberry to his to other men so does this represent charity or are these his own children he creates food for the next generation and here you have a man trapped in a pot and here you have a very famous image the image of women in the pool so water bodies often represented lust and you have cranes above the heads of these women so these cranes could represent some kind of pride which they have or even envy and they all are attracting the men and even in this pool you have uh, some relationships going on interracial and again there is this peacock there's a black lady whose head is decorated with a pupili peacock and there is these women who have apples on their head this could again represent their pride and you have a black woman and there is this particular woman who's jumping away from the pool so is she try trying to escape from these desires or is she trying to go out with all these men so these men who are going around these women are actually the slaves of venus who they are deeply in love with these women and they are courting these women they are trying to impress these women with so many things with fish and they are riding on different animals these animals could uh, represent various sins to different types of sins that human beings have like you can say horse represents some kind of pride and wish to go for war and you have a couple a hen and a cock and these men are trying to impress these women in various ways and you again you have this crescent here it could symbolize diana as i told earlier and you have the porcupine cherries and 
you even have these two people covered in a giant flower and then you have this famous egg so this egg is very special in this painting if you go back go back and go back you would notice this egg is in the middle of this painting just in the middle of this painting and again so this is an unhatched egg all of the eggs many of the eggs in this painting are actually hatched eggs or empty eggs but this egg is unhatched it has something to give to this world and you have this ball and birds getting to this ball and you have owls these animals are really awesome and this is the fountain of youth what we saw earlier was just a pond and this central water body is actually the fountain of youth and so many things are happening and there are four rivers that are joining and the fountain of youth is in the center and it's a gothic structure like all other structures in uh, the garden of earthly delights it's a gothic structure with crescent moons uh, etc and in the first panel we have noticed an owl uh, in the central dark space and here it's a couple uh, deeply in love and you have the back of a person so it shows the dark side of uh, love and you have other couples too in deep love and there's this couple walking towards a cave and it's another building here it looks very natural and you have this woman in this so it looks like a disneyland kind of setup and you have an animal without head and people swimming towards a man he could be a prophet and again you have a interracial relationship uh, it's because of this image that many people compare this uh, painting to a uh, criticism of uh, islam or ottoman empire or something like that and you have a big stock and people trying to get the cherry you have a man mounting a fish and you have this group of monkeys so uh, if it was a modern painting we would say that uh, human beings evolved from monkeys but this was a very old painting so it's just a representation of nature monkeys are also in a cave just like humans and you have this birds also again there's these people going after this cherry cherry could mean so many things and these people holding this fish who has already eaten another fish and you have the small bear again you have people playing with this bird inside an empty shell so this shell is empty it has lost all its contents and yet people are living in it so again if it's related to sin you can say while sinning people are living in empty shells they have no life in them they are hunting and doing worldly things catching this strange bird going for hunting expeditions you can find these people going for hunting exped expeditions and wow these sim there there are so many great symbols here the man flying with a fish wow uh, this man flying with a cherry and over the cherry you have a bird and you have a fish in the air so things are ga out of their elements and if you notice all these shapes they are phallic shapes and also represent uh, gothic architecture and the birds are in their own world they defy gravity 
and again you have these people watching animals it could represent animal husbandry or something uh, like that you have these people standing upside down and you have another couple and the man is giving his hand so that the woman can come up and enjoy the same way as the other couples and again this fountain of life is cracking so everything is in a state of disillusionment and you have mermaids here and the cherry I talked about earlier and the deer trying to wake up a man and again you have people coming out of the cave so people are trapped in different ideologies they get into a cave and get out of the cave they think that they will they will find meaning in life and different things you have this man having a relationship with a mermaid and all these people entering into an empty eggshell to find meaning but they don't realize this shell is already empty yeah you, they have, there are people who are on a picnic enjoying nature people climbing up and this these structures really look phallic in many ways and there is this invaders coming on horses so they are trying to invade each other to create some kind of meaning in their life and this man is touching his feet and all of them are lost in some kind of creation wow this man is riding a creature with lots of uh, legs you have all these animals and there are so many tubes and these tubes could represent alchemy alchemy was considered to be something bad during those times and you have all these phallic images phallic structures and people standing and sitting in various positions again you have a man sitting on a chimera and he has a branch with him so it could represent something that we can find in nature and these people are crawling up trying to achieve something but we don't know what they are trying to achieve maybe they are lost in their vanity so let's go down to these couples yeah that man is really looking at this rat and they are in different stages of love and this looks like adam and eve this couple out here actually looks like adam and eve maybe they are still in paradise uh, they had not eaten the apple and they are enjoying fruits and they are they are enjoying along with their children who are below and there is no aging if you notice all these people have not aged and you have this tall woman with a with two cherries it shows her extreme pride and she's actually taller than the rest and you have this couple inside the shell they're doing something privately and the pearls are coming out pearls represent chastity and in a way they are losing their chastity they are trying to conceal something from others but uh, everyone can see them and then you have this bird feeding cherries to these people there is only one cherry but there are so many people who want them and there are these enclosures and people wearing these enclosures and here there is this man with a flowers on his ass we don't know what it could symbolize all these beauties in the end would turn to something uh, that is wasteful and this we uh, 
some people say that this is a representation of barbarians the woman with a lot of hair on her body the african so it represents different races and uh, during those times there were lots of racism and there is a, another interpretation which says that this couple inside this cave are actually adam and eve and he's pointing to eve he's pointing his hand to eve so he's putting the blame on eve just like adam had done and this man is giving something to this uh, bird or is it the bird giving it to him so man always borrows things from nature and this owl man is very important it's it's like two people with the owl above them this image is uh, actually very uh, impressive and this man with a brinjal head talking to a woman it could represent some kind of pride and here we have people in nature surrounded by nature eating apples and a man impressing a woman with his strawberry yeah people bending up with crows over them so they are caught up in some kind of pride now let's go on to the third panel the third panel actually represents hell and all the punishments and most of the images here are actually artificial you have human instruments and human things and again we'll start analyzing it from below let's go below the hell panel and here you have cards and you have something drawn on the board so people are keeping some kind of records and this man has a sword on his hand piercing to his, through his hand so it's a parody of the christian image and it shows something about the evils of gambling and over him is a beast and if you notice there's again the parody of the hand of christ here the hand of christ is broken and a knife is on it and there's a dice over it and people are blind at people are suffering because it's hell so here it's the evils of gambling and this is actually a representation of eve and you have an a rabbit near her so that's what makes us say that this is a representative uh, representation of eve and the rabbit is wearing the dress of a rabbi there's anti-semitism or oh, hatred for jews represented here and all these creatures are actually torturing human beings and you have this woman with so many creatures reaching towards her and she's looking at her own image in a in the back of a monster and she's paying for the pride she had when she was alive and the other you have people are being eaten up by dogs the dogs are dressed by while the people are naked and you have this man who's made to sign an agreement and a pig dressed as a nun is making him sign this agreement maybe he's selling his soul to the devil and you have this creature giving him a pen and even this creature is injured with an arrow and there's a leg tied on it here you have this throne and you have the king of hell with a bird's head sitting on it and these are people suffering because they had committed some kind of greed and this creature is eating them and excreting them into this pool so 
they could have committed greed or they could have committed some kind of gluttony and even birds are coming out of this posterior and these people are being excreted into this dark pool and men are faces are looking through it and there is this man who is vomiting maybe he committed gluttony during his life and he is made to vomit into this pool and this man is made to shit coins maybe he was miserly and he is suffering for being a miser and you have this people representing the ottomans uh, they have even a crescent moon on their head and it's a warning against these ottomans again they you have some musical instruments over here and during those times it was believed that secular music was evil that is music used for non religious purposes and we have a man whose hands are spread out again representing christ and a woman whose head would come off when this other man turns this instrument and she's she is also playing an instrument over here and this man is playing an instrument from his posterior and you have musical a musical composition written on a man's back and if you notice these are clothed unlike the men and here surprisingly there is an unopened egg over this man's back we have a water body in this part to but here it's a frozen river and people can't move they are using certain things to move through instruments man made instruments artificial instruments to move through these frozen uh, rivers and this uh, these are all curses people had to face in hell you have this soldier being eaten by dogs maybe these this is a soldier who uh, who arrested jesus and you find this soldier inside this lantern so they, uh, there's a line in the bible which says that these soldiers came with lanterns to arrest jesus maybe it's a criticism of those soldiers and here you have a naked monk and a dressed figure saying something to the monk so is this the image of uh, hell or is this the image of purgatory and you have a monk riding a naked person etc and this is a famous tree man with two legs on two boats and inside the tree man there's a inn where people eat drink and enjoy and here they may be suffering because of this they have some one bringing them a barrel of wine and there's this flag of the backpai backpai is actually could represent a lust and there's a huge backpai and dressed creatures taking human beings around it there's a army with a red flag and they are fighting each other and you have this beautiful picture of burning walls and people going don't know where to go they are trying to enter the wall but the light they see is actually coming from fire so during bosch times uh, cities were not well planned and cities burning were usually common and it is believed that bosch had lived during a time when entire places burned and people had to escape from their homes because of these burning uh, cities maybe bosch has seen something like that when he was a child and there's this huge uh, army trying to cross the bridge and there's this man in the shelter we don't know what is he doing and people 
swimming out and trying to get into the bank but they all turn black then you have this famous killing machine the image of this two ears and this knife it could uh, it, can, it can be a representation of male genitalia also and there's an arrow going through it so it's in a way a warning against violence so there's this famous incident in the bible where peter cuts the ear of a soldier and jesus said those who live by the sword dies by it and you are not supposed to use violence even to defend christ himself so it's a warning of for so many people during the middle ages who burnt witches who killed in the name of christ and here a man uh, inside a key this could represent the key of hell and again this tree man the tree man's face actually looks as bosch himself if you have seen the images of bosch the tree man's face looks like him actually in a way he is warning himself that he could also land up in hell and you have this creature reading a book again it reminds me of the platypus uh, in the first panel a man talking to a moth moths were considered to be evil and uh, things like that yeah the suffering of people in various ways so let's go back and look at this painting as a whole so what it, what could it actually mean i don't know maybe what all i said maybe who knows what i said could be extremely wrong maybe bosch uh would have imagined it in a very different uh manner so let's conclude this video so thank you for watching i'll come up with another video soon